This is cycle two, week 23 science egg protector. This is a really cool experiment. I think um, this is one that your students might have a little bit of a hard time with. So I think as the tutor, you need uh, to bring your A game. You need to be ready. I would definitely practice this one a little bit because the basic premise is we are going to use handy dandy popsicle sticks and rubber bands to build a device that will protect an egg, a raw egg, when it is dropped from a given height. Whether the adult is standing on a chair, whether on a ladder or up on a building, um, that's sort of up to you and your director um, in week 24, how you, uh, you accomplish that. But that's the challenge. And so this is um, definitely then an experiment that I would practice at home. I think you will need to bring some models. Uh, you might want to bring sort of a series of models and I'll kind of show you what I uh, would suggest. I think it's always good for the students to have a chance to try the, the, to construct on their own, to kind of brainstorm. You know, you don't want your model to limit in any way their creativity. You want them to be fully engaged and to get the most out of it. But um, because you, you have a relatively short time period for science and because this does involve a lot of manipulation, I, I think this is one where you, you want to um, really get the students um, going and, and on task as quickly as possible. And maybe you want to plan to kind of do some of the teaching as they're constructing, kind of get them started on the design, and then you can kind of walk them through um, the, the basics. So what I would suggest I think you do then is, is start out by describing to the students what we're going to do. We're going to build a device with popsicle sticks and with rubber bands to protect a raw egg. What we're going to do is we're going to drop that raw egg. This is an experiment that will be fun and it will be a little crazy and it could be messy. Let's see what happens. Uh, so remind your students of, of the basic science of, of what we're going to do. We're going to take an egg from a given height and we're going to drop it. So what's going on? When, when the adult is holding the egg or holding the device that the egg is in, that um, egg and that device, that system has mass, it has potential energy, right? Remember, potential energy is the energy of position. So it's the height of that egg relative to, to the surface um, below. Then as soon as we release it, what happens? That potential energy begins to change form. It begins to convert into kinetic energy. And then when the, when the egg impacts the ground, then suddenly it stops moving, right? And so now all of that energy, the, the potential energy, the sum of all of that energy, the potential energy, the, the kinetic, whatever's been lost to, to res wind resistance and, and things like that, all that potential energy, all that energy then that the, that the system has now has, has to go somewhere. And so when the egg impacts the ground, then um, if, if it's not uh, properly protected, then that egg will crack. It will shatter because there's so much energy um, residing in that system and it, and it comes to a, a sudden uh, stop. So what do we need to do? We need to cushion the egg. We need to absorb some of the energy that the whole system has as it's moving when it strikes the ground. We need to create a device that will protect the egg by, by taking some of that energy so that it's not all bound up in just the egg as the egg by itself, a naked egg falls and strikes the ground, but that the whole system falls, it will absorb some of the energy of that impact will soften it, it will protect the egg. Uh, it's a little bit like the shocks on a car, uh, especially for the older students. I think this is worth pointing out. When cars were originally made, they didn't have anywhere near the kind of suspension and shock systems that we have today. So we all get to ride in modern vehicles and enjoy relatively smooth rides. You know, the, the original cars, I mean, the passengers practically felt every little pebble, right? And even today, if we go over a pothole or if the road suddenly changes, or um, then, you know, we notice and we feel it. But the impact is really minimized by the engineers who designed the car uh, and as the car was constructed because of the shock system. Again, it's absorbing that change. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. And so then I think it's worth pointing out. Okay, so our two basic materials then are the rubber band and the popsicle stick. So a good question you might ask the students is, which one of these can you stretch? Which one of these can you pull apart? Can you, how malleable is the popsicle stick? How malleable is the rubber band? Can you move it, right? And so help the students see and understand. So the rubber band, you know, we can change its shape a lot. It has, it, it has a lot of elasticity. It, this structure, because of the way it's made and the materials it's made out of, will, will move. Now, now the, the popsicle stick, if we put pressure in the middle on the ends, we can bend it. I can bend the popsicle. I could crack it, right? So uh, this has some capability uh, to absorb, but, but our primary means of absorbing is going to have to come from this rubber band. So now, Help the students see. So we're building this device that's going to hold an egg. I think this would be a good model to bring in. It's a platform, 
right? So what I've constructed is four popsicle sticks, and then I have in, in a square shape, uh, approximately square shape, and then I have four popsicle sticks bridging across. So you could imagine, you could even bring in an egg. You could imagine an egg sitting on this and falling, right? And when this structure strikes the ground, there will definitely be some give in it, the, the, these pieces of wood. There would be some give in the overall structure because it's held together by rubber bands, right? It's not glued together. Um, there, there would be some. What if I, I made an alternative design? So I again take four popsicle sticks in a roughly square shape, and now I, I make a lattice out of rubber bands. Well, I think the students will quickly begin to see and realize, right, these rubber bands, they have a lot more give than these popsicle sticks, right? Help the students start to see. So uh, I, I think the simplest egg structures, you could build something, depending on how much material you have, you, know, you could build these incredibly complex structures, but, but basically you want to have a scaffold which is sort of the four. And, and then you want to have something that the egg is gonna rest on that will give it some absorbency that will help absorb that, the, the shock of the fall, uh, of the energy uh, of the fall. And we also have to sort of attach the egg to the structure, right, uh, as it falls. So what I would suggest you do is describe the experiment to the kids that we're gonna do um, next week in week 24. So talk about the, the potential energy, um, you know, it's the mass of the egg, um, and, and then the gravity that's pulling on um, that mass of the egg, that, that's sort of the, the total potential energy from where you start, and then it's being converted into kinetic energy, it's being converted, um, some of it's being lost with friction uh, with as it moves through the, the air, Th things like that. Um, and, and then talk about how you want to build the design so that um, you can you know, minimize the, 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 the change in the energy on the egg itself and sort of use the whole structure to um to 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 absorb that energy it's a, it's a little bit like the bridge experiment when we when we talk about the idea that the way the bridges are made you know a truss bridge is designed very specifically so that the the weight and the load of the bridge is being distributed very evenly so which was part of what makes them so strong it's a little bit like that we want to absorb that energy uh, of the egg as it as it falls so and then there's other things we could do, potentially the students could do, that you might help them try to understand. So this would be relatively easy for the students to construct, kind of start here, help, help them see the two, help them understand why this is a little bit better designed, and then ask, what other things could you do? What other ways could we, um, you know, sort of soften this impact? If, if our egg is sitting here, we know we have to attach the egg somehow. We'll talk, think about that later, but, but how can we just, what can we do to help minimize um, you know, the structure. W one easy way is we, we might, you know, supply legs. That would So as the structure lands, it's going to land on these legs first. Uh, that, that might be one um, option with the materials um, that you have. My own sort of, uh, here's a little plastic Easter egg. Surprisingly, my lovely assistant didn't want me to take a raw egg mm -hmm. on our video uh, today. But, um, but, you know, a design like this is sort of what I would consider to be the sort of the simplest uh, um, egg protector that one could make. So again, we, we've got our, our basic scaffold is these four. We have rubber bands that are that are supporting it. I've used two rubber bands um, across the scaffold uh, to just support the egg and to keep it so that it won't move, it won't fall. I, I've attached a couple of supporting legs just to give it something else so that when when we drop the egg, then the, the goal is for the rubber bands to, to, to primarily provide the give in, in, the, in the structure, uh, and then the wood can also absorb um, some of the fall as well. So that if I, if I drop my structure here, like that, then it sort of lands upright and, and keeps the egg in position. Will a raw egg survive a fall with a device like this from um, three feet, from five feet, from 20 feet? I don't know, uh, it, it will depend. But um, the, the purpose is not so much for all of the students to build devices so that everybody's eggs are safe, but rather to understand what they need to build in the device. They need to build a way to absorb the energy. They need to understand the, the, the potential and the kinetic energy, what's, you know, the physics of what's happening. And then, and then how can we use our brains um, that God has made and given to us? How can we use those brains to, to change the outcome of what's gonna happen? Um, it, it's probably worth, especially for the littlest kids, to, to maybe take one raw egg with no device when you do your experiment and just demonstrate what happens. Show that as the comparison so that even if some of the eggs are cracking, um, I mean, if you drop a raw egg even from five or six feet, uh, I think you'll make a pretty good mess, a pretty good splat. 
Um, and hopefully the students will be able to build devices like this or something similar that will enable them to at least minimize the splat, if not protect the egg um, in, a, in its entirety. This is another experiment um, where I think it's really good for the kids to work in pairs. I mean, use your best judgment. Um, you know, if you don't have enough kids, then I definitely don't think more than three. I think it would be hard for three kids to work together to build something like this. But for some of the, the littler kids, it might be hard for them by themselves to just build this uh, in the time period allotted. So I would think about letting the kids work together in pairs. Um, definitely need some adult supervision. You definitely need to, to kind of um, practice how to, how to build these things with them. Um, popsicle sticks and with the rubber bands to make it go as smoothly um, as possible. But at the end of the day, again, um, if we make a splat, it's uh, just eggs and, and that's okay. And, and that's part of the fun and that's part of the learning. This is Cycle 2, Week 23 Science.